what I was trying to achieve with Everly is I wanted to make an action movie. I wanted to make a, a genre film. You know, I, I hate to say just action because it's not just action. There's you know elements of thriller in there. There's elements of elements of horror. There's elements of humor in it. it it's all those movies that I loved growing up that might not have been mainstream films. It's all those little details and all those things that you don't normally get in an action film or a thriller or genre, like any genre film. You know, like that we have moments in the movie where we're referring to uh, a mirror on the wall that has blood down it. Now, this sounds like the most boring thing you will ever hear a director describe about something that he's excited about in the movie, but when you see it in the context of the film and, and the device that it's there for, more times than not, people were going, cut that out, you don't need that, you don't right. need that. I'm like, yeah, but, I, like, not to sound pompous, but, like, but having it in there just adds a little more spice to the proceedings that you normally don't get, you know? The fact that we have, that this is a very spicy movie, by having all those little histronics, by having all those things that you're not normally used to in an action movie, the fact that it's all there, that's what I'm most proud of, that, it, that, that this is a cut that I'm extremely proud of. When you're making a movie like this, you know, uh, it all comes down to uh, foreign sales, you know, like this is, the cinema markets now have become global, you know, so the viability of a movie star in your movie will really determine both the budget of the film, but also the distribution of it, like how far and wide. And, and this was a movie that we all felt in this script was something that we go, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big movie in terms of its ambition. It doesn't have to be big in terms of scope, but this is something that you take a very basic idea, a woman trapped in a room, and she's got to fight her way out. It can go anywhere. It can go to Ireland, it can go to Asia, it can go to you know Budapest, it can go to Canada. It can, it, it's a, it's a global themed movie. It's right. not a topical political drama, you know, from the 80s, you know, New York style. It, right. It can be translated anywhere. It's a very universal idea, you know. But if you want to do that, you want to get your movie made in, in a way that is going to get out there, you got to have somebody who is going to take the fear of making a, an investment back, take that fear out. But then some came to us, and she's like, I love this script. I, you know, I think it can... The thing that I love about it, she said, I think it could be even better. This movie that has, you know, more women than men in the film, and it's yeah. definitely coming from a skewed perspective, you know, of a female gaze, it's written by two dudes, you know? So I knew, you know, like I would always be, you know, handing drafts off to my wife going like, you know, how does this feel? Does this feel real? Or, you know, is this just, you know, just, a, it's a guy role that I'm just putting a woman in, which is not what I want at all. And Selma, read the script and went, I see the promise, I see the potential, you're missing the humanity. Mm -hmm. You're missing the maternal instincts that, that, that need to be in this. Just from that moment, I remember turning to my, my producer, Luke, and going, yes. Like, because when someone said, what about Salma Hayek? I went, no, that's not gonna work. Right. You know, like, because I had this idea of who Everly was based on the two years at Yale and I worked on the script. But once we actually got to sit down with her and she explained like, okay, you have all these, you know, uh, these women of the night coming in the room and everything and she's just shooting left and right. Yeah, that's cool. But what if she knew all of them? Like what if she had a relationship with them and they're having, they know her. So there's this, you know, unfortunate moment of survival against relationships that you have to endure. What if we, what if we made that more resonant? What if we made that more real? And I'm like, oh my God, you're so right. That's what she brought every day. She would always say, what's the truth? You know, like what's the, and I think that's what really resonates with audiences who've seen it, you know, whether you like love the movie or fucking hate it, no one has ever given her a bad review for her performance, right. ever. You right. know, like, I have not read one review that said she gave a bad performance, and that is because she brought so much realness and, and heart to that character that didn't need to be there. Like, if we really wanted to, we could have just, it, it could have been a guy if we wanted to, right. it's fine. It could have been that character, but it could have just been, you know, uh, the, there's no emotional impact whatsoever involved in, in her survival from point A to point B. But that she said, stop. Why is she doing this? You know, why is she fighting to survive? And it was all about 
a mother and her daughter. You know, it, it really, when it, it, when it comes down to it, it's, it's great to say, it's Die Hard in a Room. Sure. You know, or it's like, look, this is a, you know, crazy action movie that's got blood and guts and, you know, and tons of violence and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've heard The Raid with Tits, you know, which, <laughs> which I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when, the, when you get to a certain point in the film and it really is about a mother and a daughter, that's what the movie's about. And that's, without Salma Hayek, we would not have had that.